Hi, I'm Kay. I'm Elena. We are the, the Immigration, immigration people. people. Elena, today we are going to take a break on our two-part video series on business relocation. How come? Well, this is because we have a hotter and more pressing topic that we would like to address today. Have you heard of the recent debates in Singapore Parliament about Singaporean jobs, livelihood and foreign talent policies? Ah, yes, this one is definitely a very relatable topic to most of our viewers out there. How is the Singapore government going to secure the well-being and livelihoods of Singaporeans in a post-pandemic world? And what is going to happen to the foreign talent workforce in Singapore? Yes, you're right, Elena. And this will lead to how a foreign talent living in Singapore should approach for their Singapore PR and Singapore citizenship application. Mm -hmm. Without further ado, let's begin! Before I came to Singapore to work, I've always wondered why a much smaller country compared to Malaysia without any natural resources is able to make its name globally. According to IMD World Competitiveness Ranking 2020, Singapore was ranked number one in two years in a row. This is because Singapore adopts an open economy practice whereby we thrive by staying open and connected globally. Singapore is a global leader on several indicators such as human capital, our ease of doing business, and remaining competitive on a global level. Another great thing about Singapore is that we have a globalization of talent pool. Job will follow where the people are located instead of people migrating to where the opportunities is. There are many benefits for us to have foreign talent in Singapore such as they are able to create economic growth in Singapore, they can boost employment and they can encourage a diversified workforce. Another reason why Singapore welcomes foreign talents is simply because there isn't sufficient Singaporeans to fill all the positions in our economy. Yes, exactly. And just like any first world or developed country, we have low fertility rate problem. Our birth rate has fallen to 1.14 in year 2019, which is way below 2.1 to achieve a self-sustaining population. Don't worry, this is exactly why our government has made consensus plans to counter this problem. In order to support Singapore's continued growth and remain competitive globally, we have combined both local and foreign professionals by bringing in skilled professionals from all over the world. Well, we may have heard of some disgruntled Singaporean who thought work pass holder are here to compete for our jobs. Well, this is not true. Almost 80% of our PMAT workforce are local and unemployment rate has remained very low. In fact, 9 out of 10 fresh graduates from local university are able to secure a job within 6 months from graduation. This is way better than where I come from. I still remember some of my friends are struggling to find a job back then even though they are graduated from top university in Malaysia. Also, we actually benefit from having these foreign talents around compared to not having them. These foreign talents will actually transfer their knowledge to our local workforce so that we Singapore remain competitive at a global level. If we fail to do so, many businesses may not be able to compete globally and we might even see many multinational companies moving their business overseas. Do you know just for tech jobs alone, there's 19,000 unfilled vacancies across various industries every year? With all these unfilled positions, it's only contingent that we continue to bring in foreign talent to drive our economy. But rest assured, the Singapore government will always place our own citizens as priority. This is why the Ministry of Manpower has been increasing the qualifying salaries for SPAS and EP holders. This is to ensure the quality of the foreign professionals we are bringing in. Well, we understand the importance of having foreign talent in Singapore, but with all the ongoing debates, I wouldn't be surprised if government takes some more initiatives and steps to further tighten the foreign talent policy and work pass requirements. Not just increasing the qualifying salary and quota, but earlier this year in May, MOM has also announced that all dependent pass holders cannot work in Singapore under letter of consent anymore. 
With this, we are unsure if the PR and citizenship quota will be affected in the future. Yes, this is needed for the Singapore government to ensure that the interests of Singaporeans are being protected while maintaining a balanced influx of foreigners to drive our economy. We have seen many measures rolled out by the Singapore government to ensure our local Singaporeans get priority to all job openings. With this, if you are an SPAS or EP holder in Singapore, attaining a PR status or citizenship status will give you and your family the much needed stability here. Yes, you're right. If you are eligible to apply for Singapore PR and Singapore citizenship, you should do it now so that you will not be affected by any further changes in the policy one to two years down the road. Furthermore, going through this COVID-19 pandemic has helped many people redefine what is considered safe for a country. I would say Singapore has managed the COVID-19 situation pretty well and ensured that most of our people has been vaccinated as compared to our other Asian counterparts. And that's all for today. We hope that you have found our sharing today helpful and you can step up and put your thoughts into action for your PR and citizenship journey. Contact us to arrange for a complimentary consultation. Let us help you. If you are new to our channel, do hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.